Hello, Restart community. Uh, we are live with you on Facebook today uh, because we want to talk about something that's pretty important to us. Uh, it started as something that, as an incident, is not a uh, big thing, but in a large, when you put it in a, in a larger perspective, it is important to what we do. We intentionally call this video "Solving a Grand Challenge" because we believe this is directly linked to our mission here at Restart. Uh, a lot in the past uh, months, maybe even years, we have heard loud stories about uh, this crisis, the refugee crisis. We have heard people on both sides of the argument saying we should build borders or walls or we should let the door open. Uh, the reality is we as citizens, we as informed, uh, educated people, uh, even we, we don't and are not able to have an accurate opinion, right? Uh, many times, and us as research as an organization, we do not have a public opinion about how should refugee policy run or be like. We don't have enough information. What we do have enough information about is uh, smaller things, micro skills. So we don't go into the macroeconomic context, but we go into our community. For instance, we are in Rotterdam and we see what happens around us and we try to do something about the things that happen here, starting small and dreaming big. Uh, and what happened yesterday, we uh, got a comment, it doesn't matter who posted it or names, but we got a comment that proves a point and we'd like to discuss it and be very open about, uh, about that. So I'm actually going to read uh, the comment to you and then we're going to discuss it a bit. So somebody commented uh, on one of our videos, we got the coverage on one of the local TV stations here in Rotterdam about our program uh, and we discussed what we do at Restart. We uh, take refugees and we teach them uh, computer programming so they start a new career uh, in the Netherlands. And uh, we got a comment saying, I get a little crazy about people uh, want to get forward with helping refugees. Uh, I get more and more the feeling that they want to have help themselves up in the community and do that over someone else. If we want to help, why do we need to show uh, like this and always talk about them as refugees? These are educated people and uh, the least they deserve uh, to have uh, is the title human instead of refugee. Come on guys, help but don't talk about other humans as if they are less. Uh, so this was a comment we got uh, on one of our videos. and. I learned very uh, soon when I started sort of this journey into non-profits, Restart was not the first thing I did, uh, the fact that when you're trying to do something uh, for a good cause, no matter your intentions, people will always be, uh, people will always, there will always be people that, people that will, will not like you, right? So uh, a simple example of this, some time ago I started a coding program for students, right? And uh, uh, we had a limited number of spots since we had limited resources. Uh, only 20 people could get in, only 20 students, and those who did not get in, they got, uh, they got very mad because, you know, how is the admission process going, like why am I in, and, or, or why is my friend in, and I'm not in. So even when you get good intentions and you try to, to do something that's cool and excites you, there will be people on both sides of the argument, right? And same happens here, except the stakes are larger, and I, I want to talk about this comment because it's at the core of what we try to achieve at Restart Network. So, there are two parts of that comment that I want to discuss. First, uh, the people behind Restart, the core team trying to gain something more than uh, helping other people. And secondly, uh, maybe most importantly, uh, the fact that um, we, we try to, to show this everywhere. If we're good people and we truly want to help others, why do we have to like take all these pictures, go on TV stations, have all these newspaper articles written about us? Like, what's the purpose of that? And that's a valid question. That's exactly why we're answering it. Uh, my position within Restart, besides teaching coding classes, is to make sure to head organizations in the right way. I act as the chairman of Restart Network and I'm ultimately responsible for the success or failure of achieving our strategic goals. Uh, by our strategic goals, I mean reaching as many uh, refugees as possible and placing them into uh, jobs and helping them integrate into our community, right? Uh, the way you do this is not very different than how you would run a normal organization. Except our goal is not to make a profit, but to have these metrics. Uh, a, lot, a lot of time, our success and the reason Restart is successful today is because we managed to put all these big companies and organizations around us. We managed to get people that are much smarter than me or people in my team. We managed to get people with much more experience and results to help us. And uh, the way we did that uh, is that they, they heard about us through different ways. Be it through our network, be it through our Facebook page, be it through these television covers. Uh, it is extremely hard, if not impossible, to grow and achieve something like that 
unless you promote the course, unless you do uh, give interviews explaining we're looking for new students, unless you do explain what you do and people hear about us. Thus, for us to achieve something greater than just teaching 20 students today, uh, it is imperative for us to share this story. Uh, when I started with my co-founder Fred, uh, our big goal and dream is that we go beyond teaching 20 students and we go to teach hundreds or ideally thousands. And this will never be possible unless people hear and are inspired about what we do. It is equally important that people see this is possible to be done by ultimately a bunch of students and they will think hopefully I can do better rather than us sitting in the classroom uh, closing our doors and not allowing others, be it prospective students, be it companies that want to hire our students, be it people that want to just know and support you, the community at home, uh, not know about what we do. So for me, when running this organization, I make sure that people know about our mission and I make sure that they have every chance possible to take part in the mission to help us get closer to our goals. That's the big thing. Then, uh, part of the comment was uh, criticizing the fact that we use the word, the word refugee. Uh, it's it's, it's un unfortunate we spend so much time and energy uh, trying to talk about how should we refer to, to people coming to our continent from more torn countries. We spend so much energy trying to, to say whether or not it is ethical to think about them as economic resources that would integrate in our society and like make this all, all this analysis from an economic standpoint rather than from a human standpoint. There are humans, and as you said, that's completely right. They are highly educated, extremely smart, no different than us human beings. So why do we refer them to, to the world as refugee? And arguments go and go. But these arguments do not have an impact here in the real world. These arguments will never uh, reach a point in which you say, yes, by answering this question, we have helped so many people. Uh, we always prefer to take action instead of uh, yeah, debating. There's a lot of people debating on should we give asylum to refugees? Should we accept them? Should we? We don't know. Truly, we don't. And even if we think about that for a long time, we probably won't reach an answer. That's not our goal here, and that's uh, what we're not planning to do, or we, we're not planning to start uh, the list. Uh, what we're trying to do is to continue what we're doing right now, to take action, to run boot camps, to teach people programming, to try to integrate them into jobs, and at the end of which to iterate through everything, make our program better, and continue to do so for as long as possible on a larger scale. So, to us, Refugee or not, it's, it's a term we use in the framework of the English language. To me personally and to my team, it means uh, it has little emotional meaning. It, it's, it's a way to refer to our target student audience, which is people coming from countries where they were not safe, where their families were not safe, they had to come to a safer place and they reached our country. Uh, if, you, if you have a recommendation for a better term, please share it uh, with us. Uh, it, it has nothing to do with the word uh, itself. Uh, in the last 10 weeks, uh, when our program ran here in Rotterdam, uh, we have met so many uh, awesome people that now we consider them our friends. Uh, coming from all different countries, not only Syria, not only Eritrea, and people we spend most of the day, most of the time with, people that we play football with, we go to barbecues with, and they truly become part of our community, right? So, irrespective of what you want to refer to them, uh, yes, you are completely right. They are extremely educated, extremely smart humans. And if you find a better term for them, uh, truly, let's, let's use that. Uh, that's one thing. Another big thing would be the fact that, uh, the argument that here at Restart, uh, maybe not everyone knows, or maybe not a lot of you know, that uh, we do not get paid or remunerated in some way, at least not now. Uh, so it's, it's a sort of a, uh, the common question of, okay, but why do you do it then, right? You, you, don't, you don't come from a background that would, uh, give you a tendency to help refugees, like, well, what's up with you and this cause, right? Uh, do you have ulterior motives? Do you try to get into, like, I don't know, grow your way through, through the community, as the commenter said? Uh, and of course, how can, how can we convince anybody of our intentions, be it pure or be it not? And to me, the answer is through our actions, right? Uh, we spent here uh, all, our, uh, all our summer with the team, uh, we put all the time uh, that we have available and all our skills and knowledge into trying to make this program best. Uh, I truly hope that people at home uh, make their own opinion. They, they can think we can do it for an interest, we can do it without, without an interest, out of like uh, wish to, to solve a big challenge. Uh, but either way, uh, our actions, I believe, speak louder than anything I could try to tell you or convince you uh, we're doing, right? Uh, so that's another thing. So, to, 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 I guess to, the point I'm getting across here uh, is the fact that we will 
continue to do this, to promote what we do, to share the mission, dreams and goals of Restart Network, be it through the videos that Damon is always doing, uh, even now from behind the camera, uh, be it from the pictures we always take. Uh, the reason for that is simple. We cannot do this alone. Like, uh, this grand challenge is not meant for a bunch of five students to solve. It is meant for everybody coming together and using their skills, knowledge and background to contribute somehow, right? And the only reason we're going to reach as many people as possible is through that. Uh, starting September, when our new cohort begins, uh, we got people from the United States moving over uh, to uh, the Netherlands for, uh, for 12 weeks for the Lens of Art program uh, to volunteer and use their skills, very skilled developers, to help in our program. Uh, the only reason they heard about us in the first place was through what we're doing here. Through these materials, through uh, videos like this, through live feeds that we do every week. Uh, and that is to us invaluable. So that's, that's the first thing. And also, uh, the fact that <laughs> one of our uh, story, maybe not, not, not a lot of people know, when we started Restart uh, and we were looking for students, uh, how do you reach students, right? Think about it yourself. Like if you were to assemble a class of 20 people coming from world from countries, where do you start, right? Uh, Fred and I went to Facebook groups. We went to uh, all these pages we didn't understand. They were written in Arabic, right? And we started posting like, hey, we're starting this, this, this course. Do you want to take part in it, right? Uh, to us, it's extremely important that we have channels to always get more people in, to always teach more people. And what we do here, broadcasting these kind of things, is the way to reach people in the digital age, right? Um, I want to encourage you one thing that's very important to me and to, to us here in general. Uh, to ask us any questions you have now on this live feed. So if you're at home right now looking at what I'm telling you and talking for, for some time now, do ask us uh, any sort of questions you have about how we run our program, why do we do these videos, why don't we do more videos. Uh, so it, it is important, I believe, especially when you're an NGO and there is this premise that there might be ulterior motives when you're doing something, uh, to always be transparent, and that's our policy here in everything we do. We're as open as possible, our doors are always open uh, to our classroom, and we invite always people to come in and step and see what's happening, how we do things, because first, we need to improve our program, and uh, second, uh, we have to be accountable for what we do in our program, and we want people to have access to, to that. Uh, cool, we are also double live feed here, I see, from Damon. Uh, cool, let's see. Do we have... Uh, we have some comments. We have some on comments. The screen, yeah. They're on the screen, okay. So call your students restarters instead of refugees, and I would also like to know uh, your college told them students with a lot of psychological problems. I think this hurt it the most. Okay, so we have a comment saying that uh, we should first call them restarters. Uh, for sure, that's a good suggestion. So we, uh, we actually, we heard this uh, uh, again, and we try to, to keep in mind the fact that you know, refugees is a term with an emotional, as much as we like to, you know, us personally are not like influenced emotionally, a lot of people are, right? So we like to refer to our students as students. Uh, restarters is also a good term, but here's a point uh, that's interesting. Uh, he says, uh, why your colleague called them students with a lot of psychological problems? So uh, this refers to an uh, interview, a coverage of Restart Network that was done on Open Rotterdam, a local TV station here, in which Fred, my co-founder and good friend of mine, uh, said our students come from a background where they had lots of traumas, so they are a bit, uh, they are, maybe we can find, can we find the actual video? To we show? can find the video. Yes. That, would be, that would be great, to see exactly what, what Fred said. Uh, what Fred meant to say, and I think said uh, in that video, is the fact that most of our students come from a rough background. It is a reality we have to deal with and keep in mind when we are teaching them. So most of our students don't come from countries where uh, everything was safe and uh, the quality of life is like here in the Netherlands. That's a simple reality that we cannot ignore. Uh, to us, it, it counts even more so when we're able to give these people. So from anywhere you come in the world, you are able to have access to a such All program. Right, to, to, can you turn it a bit off? To such an education, uh, you know, exactly one coming from such a background, there's no limits, right? So what Fred meant to say uh, is the fact that they had a rough background and they're now here looking forward. We're not trying to look backward to like how sad, you know, like, or uh, that's not our point. We're trying to start a new life uh, or help them start a new life and integrate in our community. That is exactly why uh, we sort of said we are aware of where they come from but we're working together to make a better future. Uh, we cannot just dismiss uh, their, their background, we are aware of it, 
uh, but that's not the focus of what we do. And maybe uh, it is a bit unfortunate that uh, it was perceived in a way that it was not meant to be said, but I can assure you our goal is not to, uh, to uh, uh, put any, on any scale lower our students. That would be, that'd be uh, simply, especially after what we've seen like, and how much they achieved in last weeks. That is truly not our goal. Maybe we have, do we have the, the scene with, uh, with Brett so we see exactly uh, what happened? It's one of the, it's one of the first ones. Let's see. So now we're trying to find the actual scene. Uh, so in the right the teams through this target is it shot who you are to have access to a right to create. Stop. The, okay, stop it there. Right that one. And if we enable them to create products with digital skills, then they can help other people in their community as well because they know the problems firsthand and they're the best ones to draft solutions for. It. Well, it's not, I encourage you to really see, this is a good highlight of what we do at Restart. Uh, in one of these, uh, it's a shot of Fred saying, say, saying uh, something about their background, maybe uh, Damon can find it. Uh, but please, I encourage you to watch it again uh, and see that, uh, okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's see. Have it? Yeah. Sure. These guys have been through a lot of psychological distress lately and um, throughout the past years, and here they're in an environment where they are completely free, they can create, they can educate themselves on their own, in their own pace, and um, you can see that this has a lot of positive effects. So, they have, uh, they have been through a lot of psychological distress. Uh, this is this is the, this is the um, unfortunate reality of the, of the world we live in, the fact that it's not everything, uh, uh, you know, flower power. And some parts of this world are unfortunately under a, uh, uh, they are confronting with serious problems, with serious challenges that they have to solve. It is a reality for most of our students that they come from countries where they could not live happily. And it's not their choice they have to live. Uh, we have seen that firsthand and we can comment on that since we experienced it. Uh, but I think the thing that has to be emphasized in what Fred said is the other part that here they are in an environment in which they are free to create, they have the freedom to choose what they want to do, they have the freedom to learn, to craft, to work together, uh, to start again, to restart. I guess that is what should be emphasized uh, in what Fred said, and I truly agree with that. That's what we try to create and that's what we're working for. And I hope that at least answers your question or brings more background information into, into where that comes from. Do we have a different comment? We do. We do. Shoot, shoot at us the comments. We are here for that. Um, and please, everybody, if you have a comment, not necessarily about this specifically, uh, but about our programs, about what, how we run them, what's next. If you are a student that wants to apply, uh, do shoot us a message. And otherwise, just message us afterwards with your question. If you see this at home afterwards, after we're uh, off live streaming, uh, we're happy to answer your questions. Yes? So, I'm asking if anyone has any questions about anything. So, Fred has something to say. Okay. So, Fred has. So, oh, actually, Fred is. Okay, Fred is not likely to do also. The people at home can actually go and read his comment. I don't want to read it uh, out loud now. It's just easier for everybody to read it under the video. Uh, that's also what uh, Fred is emphasizing over there. Uh, cool. Other, other comments, please. The people at home, say hi uh, to us here. Fred, start. Fred's sharing his message. Just read it out so people want to know. So, um, he says. The term I used was, they have experienced a lot of psychological distress. Uh, he said it was fitting, but he apologizes if, he, if, if, if you feel that it was inappropriate and hurtful. Anyways, these are small details of terms. That's, that's again the main message, that guys, this is not about small debates on what words should we use. This crisis is not about, you know, is this appropriate to say? Is this like more ethical than... Like that's not the point here. The point is to find appropriate solutions. And that's what we should all put energy into. And if I'm sure of one thing, is fundamentally we are more fitted together to work and find these solutions than we are drifting apart, uh, answering uh, or referring or wasting energy on, on things like this. But I, I highly, I highly uh, appreciate the fact that we have diversity of opinion here at Restart. That is important. If we don't have another comment, I think we can, uh, uh, we can kind of wrap up or go towards the wrap up with uh, uh, the short sum up of, uh, of what we just said in this video. That is, uh, we continue and we have a policy of delivering content out into the world because we believe that what we're doing is inspiring to others and it might 
uh, spark something in other people's minds to start the project like we start, to make it better than we do. We challenge you because truly that is the goal. Uh, we started this in Rotterdam. There's so many other cities in the world that have a similar uh, situation, a similar context like Rotterdam, in which something like Restart Network can, can start. I highly encourage you to look into it. If you don't have the skills yourself, uh, do something that's related to your skills. Do something, team up with people. We teamed up with people that are market marketed us in the development world in order to run such a program. That's really where we should put our energy, into finding solutions, not debating whether or not the current terms are fine or we deliver too much content. Uh, we hope that our comment will reach millions of people and we hope they will know what Restart Network does and will continue to support us and our community to grow uh, far beyond uh, the walls of Rotterdam, the borders of Rotterdam or the borders of the Netherlands and truly have a global scope. Uh, we're working a lot uh, to, to go there and I'm sure, I'm absolutely certain that if we reach enough people we can truly leave a dent in this crisis, uh, which to us is the reason we're doing it in the first place. Uh, so otherwise, please, I think this is a, it's a great experience for us as well. If you have other concerns like this, absolutely share them with us. And we are very open and transparent in the way we answer them and in the way we refer to, this, uh, to these problems. So please, by all means, share them with us uh, and we will make sure to do something like this in which we address them. Uh, otherwise, I'm expecting your questions. Everybody in the team is uh, on the lookout for them. So send us a private message or just comment on our uh, Facebook uh, post. And uh, follow us uh, next week. In next week, we have some uh, interesting workshops going on. We're working with APIs, and uh, we're getting closer to the to the finish line of our program, where students actually start to build their projects. Uh, so be sure to, to check out what we're doing. And if you are a prospective student, uh, uh, student at Restart, please, please, please apply. We want to meet you and hear your story. So uh, do send us a message. This is Theodor from Restart Network with Damon behind the camera. Thanks a lot, guys, for uh, watching us. What's the link for the recruitment? Just go to our website at restart.network and you will find all the information there. There's a big red button, it used to be uh, behind me, uh, that's going to take you to a form. We ask you some information regarding uh, where you're from, how old are you, if you speak English uh, 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 to a normal level and such. Just uh, click on join the bootcamp and uh, that's where it is. Cool.